Welcome to Linux OTC, where Bill tells us why tenacity sucks. Episode I'm... 36. <laughs> oh, hey, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> is it 36? Yeah, because yeah, it was 35 it last time. Yeah. 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 You mean you didn't pre-name your file? Come on. <sighs> um, no, no, I never do that. <laughs> I sometimes I don't save it at all. I just How would you ever it. recover in case of a power outage? Oh, I like to live life on the edge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, life on I'm, the edge. I'm Microsoft Edge. I'm on the melon farmer. Edge. <laughs> no, tena you was asking me before we started rolling about tenacity, and I've had some problems with the uh, with some crackling on that. I'm not real sure why. Uh, other than that, I've I've always liked it. It's kind of a it's a fork back before. Um, a lot of the new VST stuff, right? Like a lot of the, um, yeah, because they uh, Muse Group took over Audacity, got all of the licensing swapped over, mm -hmm. and then uh, the thing that made everybody mad was that Audacity gave you that checkbox that you could uncheck that said yeah. I forget what it was, but I'm sure it was like telemetry or something like that. That, that being said, I'd never seen it. Yeah, right. I, I, and I don't know. I feel like it was probably going to be benign stuff, but, you know, the, the tight of that tinfoil. So everybody made a bunch of forks. Tenacity seemed to one win out as far as the uh, the more popular fork. And, um, yeah, so they're, they're not um, – they're doing their own development, and Audacity is uh, moving into where what everybody asked of Audacity a long time ago, which was non-destructive editing, right? So they're uh, enabling a lot of the VST and non-destructive type uh, effects that people have been asking for for a while. So that's that's kind of where they're at. But you're telling me, Bill, you're running Audacity, not Tenacity. So they fixed the problems that I had with Audacity. Oh. And they even fixed the big problems. See, they've, they've had a major release update. Uh, they're on 3.6.3. When 3.6.0 and 3.6.1 came out, you'd be in the middle of a recording or, and this, uh, once again, only a Linux problem, uh, or editing something and the whole thing would just turn blank on you. What? So that was a problem. Um, yes, I can imagine. Only see, slightly. That's why you do like me, man. You just never upgrade it. I'm still yeah, well, on Audacity 3.3.3. I mean, it... yeah, yeah, look that up. Look how long ago that came out. I don't care, man. I don't need upgrades. I have a workflow, and it's going to be the same to the day I die, boy. <laughs> um, they, f But they, they fixed those, those problems. They, they patched it, and they even fixed the horizontal scroll bar problem yeah. that okay. I've been dealing with for a long time. You just and shift scroll with your mouse. That's all you need no, to do. Yeah, I just I, I, I came to the realization that I never use it anyway. Yeah. It's just one of those things that annoyed me. That it worked perfectly fine in Windows, right. but there in window there in, in Linux it was it was okay. Not Newsflash: good. Linux has jank again. Who yeah. would have thunk it? Turns this out this is this is a project backed by a company with some s significant money going towards it, though. You know, I we're talking Audacity, right? Music yeah, video. yeah. Now tenacity. Another thing about tenacity, I follow their Matrix channel, which is kind of their their support and their dev communication thing. They are very open source. When I say when I say they are very open source, they Stalmanesque. Are, they are quite Stalmanesque in my my opinion, and I'm not criticizing. They host their code on Codeberg. Um, I'm I don't have an opinion on that. Um, they use only things like... It's a like, code repository. How could you possibly have one? Well, because <laughs> there's politics get, right? in all this crap, though, isn't right. there? You know, yeah, um, Linux that, nerds that, will find something in something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, other, yeah. It's, they? Still, it's still Git, right? Like, you still yeah, correct. commit the same way. You the, still push The interface pull. is exactly the same. You still it, open up issues and have big, long-winded conversations that go absolutely nowhere. Yes. Absolutely but, the same. Actually, you know what? This actually uh, leads me to a question I've, I've had. Uh, I assume you guys have used Git for a while yeah. in some way, shape, mm -hmm. or form. Mm -hmm. Did you notice anything when the Microsoft took, uh, takeover happened? Did it change? Not, not a GitHub. Um Matter of fact, I think uh, more resources are available to folks for free now. The, the only reason I say this is because I was watching, uh, you know, watching a YouTube video talking about 
a usual Microsoft Windows catastrophes, you know, around Copilot and recall and stuff like that. And how, um, you know, this is the time to jump over to Linux. There's loads of videos like that nowadays, which is good. I don't nowadays. Know true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> true. But even more, you know, I've spurred on by, yeah. you know, all of, the, all of this stuff. And they're talking about the amount of money that is has to be spent to keep these AI data centers. You know, Microsoft themselves have probably spent about 19 billion, apparently. Um, yeah. Oh, so matter of fact, in the Northeast somewhere, they're opening up, they're reopening a nuclear plant just to sell the electricity to Microsoft so they can power their AI stuff. So, yeah. 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 So therefore, so therefore, the, the, the thought then came to my mind that they're going to have to recoup this money from somewhere, right? Mm. Um, Building will they're, come. They're, yeah, um, it looks like the way they're going to recoup it is by selling data. That's what makes it's Microsoft, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, but I mean, that's the primary way of doing it. Which then kind of thought, wait a minute, but then they also run Git. Are they going to monetize Git in some way? Well, they're they're running Git Hub, not Git. Okay, so that that's a okay, that's a def- differentiation. I don't know. Explain right, that. Okay, to me, so then. GitHub is just a platform that hosts all that code, and Git is the uh, the command line utility and protocol that we use to send stuff from here to there it's the framework that that github is kind of yeah built. git is the pipe github is the place where it goes yeah okay fine and so until so they own github so I, okay so right. are they going to monetize github then oh a thousand percent oh a gajillion percent yes okay yeah because you're already you're already paying for like the enterprise features and and yeah things the, like the that the copilot GitHub. the copilot ai that helps you write code in vs code is sucking up all the code on github to train the AI. Yeah. I mean, they're already doing it. Okay. So is there not a, um, is there not like an inherent conflict there then that you've got open source stuff on a platform, which is being specifically used to power Microsoft's AI? Uh, yeah. I mean, right. That's why the tenacity folks are on Codeberg. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. if you look at something like Codeberg or, uh, yeah. What's the other one? The more popular one, GitLab. GitLab. These interfaces are very, very similar. The only thing they're lacking is some of the more uh, social uh, features that GitHub might have that connect people together, and you, the the network effect that GitHub has. Yeah. So, oh, but that's so why Git- Microsoft bought them because. Yeah, so- GitHub had this already baked in. Right. So so GitLab is what a fork or no. uh, or um, just another another platform that's using Git. Git. Yes. Correct. Exactly. As is as is Codeberg and there's others. Okay. How much of those, you know, if you were to make percentages of like all right, you know, 50% of the stuff on GitHub, then you know what's on GitLab and cold yeah. burdens. Are. I mean, compared to GitHub, fractions. I mean, okay. like, look around. Any any link, any any uh, news article about a new software that comes out, where does that link take you? GitHub. GitHub. Every yeah. time. Every mm-hmm. single time. Sometimes you'll see a GitLab in there every now and then. And even more rare, Diamond in the Rough, you'll find a Codeberg link. And it's always a fork of something of that course. came well, from right, GitHub exactly. or something. You yeah, know? they're they're on Codeberg for that reason. Right, yeah. mm. and you look like in the case of Tenacity, and again, I'm not I'm not criticizing. In fact, you know, I've got some I've got some respect for it. Uh, all of their social interaction is on things like uh, Matrix and Mastodon and things like that. And and uh, oh, here comes Joe late to the party again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hey, he'll yeah, never get that fun. lined up, Bill. Yeah. Uh, give give. Let's get an audacity running for you. Joe. Oh, uh, you want me to use Audacity? You're not just going to use the... No, I never do. No, we're not cool like that you this time. You did last time. Well, last had, time. Yeah, because Bill wasn't, wasn't there. Uh-huh. <laughs> I figured it'd be okay for me to just jump in. This yeah, it absolutely for, is. We just this one's get for you, you Dave. <laughs> Bill comes here, and now we got trouble. <laughs> <laughs> ain't, ain't room for the two of us well, in this well, town. tenacity to <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of tenacity, hey, get yeah. ready for some crackly audio, Bill. <laughs> yeah. So, um, 
The other thing about tenacity is that they are doing away or they're trying to do away with Nyquist plugins altogether. And so they are using some alternative you want you want plugins or zero yeah go ahead and do a zero. Oh well three three two go no go ahead just just start recording all right i'm recording i'm gonna line it up with the audio i'll clap the... how about we clap when he says zero three two one zero there you Yay. go there's something to look for bill something to line up on you yeah. got it Anywho, I'm being attacked yeah. by a puppy. So if you run, if you run, don't uh, mess with the camera, you little. Oh, is that shit. the new one? Okay, guy, puppy, guy, 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 puppy. He does look cute, actually. I'm yeah, not really a dog a, a, person, but yeah, he does look cute. Tenacity's got some Hand different plugins. Uh, it's got a different, uh, or not different plugin, different filters than uh, Audacity does, even than the older Audacity does. So the Nyquist plugins, uh, how do you know what's what in Audacity? I, I just click on the filter thing and go down and click on like limiter, and it limits. Um, they their compressor, for example, is a. It looks like a much more. Uh, I don't know. Well, Audacity just revamped that one. Yeah, but then they brought back with with the new version of Audacity. They brought back what they call the legacy. Uh, oh yeah, because people use those. Yeah. Well, the people got them plugged into their macros and everything like that. And yeah. when they r try to run their macros, it was it. it you're still going to have to change the macro to say legacy uh, compressor. Or, right, or but you whatever, don't have to rewrite you know? the whole thing, right? Right. And and that was the problem people were having. And again, this is why I run on Audacity 3.3.3. And yeah, that might as well be legacy. <laughs> I don't have I'm, to change nothing. But yeah, that's yeah, that's that had, whole thing in a nutshell. We've all had issues with the new Audacity for one Not me! Another. Well, that's because you don't the new version of Audacity. That is correct. We're, yeah. we're lucky to get you off an Apple device. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, my audio recorder doesn't even run a full operating system. It's just a recorder. So it's just a wave recorder. Yeah. I was looking at those too, by the way, and I thought, ah, I don't need one more piece. Just run by Best Buy. Sometimes they're on clearance. You can get them for under a hundred bucks. So and people they're don't know what they are. Thousand percent worth it, dude. Yeah. I might in the future when I decide to start complicating things again. No, no, no. You're uncomplicating things. You're removing a moving target from your life where you can just press record and it records without... Anything. By adding you're another making input. The, you're, you're making the assumption that we you have want a our life to be easier. Oh, there you I mean, go. See, well, you see, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you know, let's be honest. A lot of us like the tinkering, don't we? Right. Yeah. We well, like see, the fiddling. But you, you had mentioned the juxtaposition of both having a Gen 2 right here that yeah, requires a I ton of tinkering. Yeah, I was going to reference that again. But also, yeah, having <laughs> Apple devices in my life, I like both. Sometimes I don't feel like tinkering, and I just want to push a button and things work, right? That's why I have an Apple TV over there. But sometimes I want to feel the pain and have to compile my own system. And that's why my Gen 2 is right here. So I... It's I thought not you were going to say something cool like that. That's why your Apple TV is currently running Mint. Oh, no. No, <laughs> Apple TV is running... Uh, By the Apple way, TV right OS now, whatever it is. Apple TV is the only way to watch. And I don't even know if it works on that right now. The, Hold on, uh, Bill. Stop saying good stuff about Apple crap. Oh, no, no, well, this is this is a garbage situation. Please continue. Yeah, Redbox uh, video streaming. The last I heard, the only device that was still working was the Apple TV. Well, that's because Redbox is going into bankruptcy. So And you're going to see those. Let's not blame Apple for that. Th Here this in the was States, like... Majid, we've got these. Yeah, I was going to say, I, yeah, I, I have no idea what Redbox is. Well, I've heard, well, I lie. I have heard Look, some people to re reference Redbox, Redbox, but it's not a thing for me. Redbox is blockbuster in a box. Yeah, it's, it's a, okay. it's a, uh, a, 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 not a, uh, what do you call those? Like a, a machine. Kiosk. It's a, uh, it's a vending machine yeah, for vending videos. Machine. Yeah. And every drugstore and grocery store had one of these either out front or even inside the store. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this, the, they are basically going by, I don't know if they're dying 
in a worse way than Blockbuster did when they no. took over. They also had a uh, digital subscription where you could yes. buy buy videos and you were supposed to have access to them through their services in perpetuity but you could only watch them through their services and now that they're going out of business people are losing access because they're not updating their app and the um, <clears throat> only one that's currently working it, well Android was one of the last ones to get dropped but Apple's the last last holdout where it's still wait working. so this is a good thing Apple's doing a good thing here. Well, Apple's not updating their system in the same way as everybody else. Yeah, it's freaking yeah, it's it's yeah, it's basically I Apple can't. not being as shitty as everyone else is. Think I, I can't verify that it still You're works welcome. on Apple though, because when I tried to get to the website, the website was throwing up weird errors about system clock and all that, which tells me they haven't rebooted the server in enough time for the system clock to go off somehow i don't on know. what device is this on any brow on a browser i tried to log into it you know, any com. any modern browser that's worth having yeah oh, so, okay. so so is this where that conversation came up um yes i think in, in discord about uh owning your own media yeah. and this kind of stuff ah okay fine fine um that's interesting actually because i actually had um so you know i got a nas uh, I've mentioned it, I think, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And right. I've been, you know, slowly figuring myself, uh, figuring out how to use it and stuff. So the next thing I've been doing is uh, either setting up either a Plex server or a Jellyfin. And for some reason, I can't get either of them to bloody work. And I don't know why. It's probably just because... It's probably because um, Synology, when you sign up, they have this kind of... Oh, what is it? They have their own quick connect thing. And I wonder if that's what's interfering. So that like when I just put the IP address, I can't just access the NAS straight away. Um, I, d I, d I don't know. Um, so I, I need to figure that out. And I because I have content as well that I have. Uh, legally purchased. I, I, yes. Uh, everything has been legally acquired, obviously. Um, and... I didn't rob anybody when I went to the Red Box and got that Blu-ray. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brought it home. But but, the, the, but then you see, you robbed the corporation when you ripped it. Okay, you yeah, robbed did them. I? You pickpocketed them. You removed my, value. I'm gonna start crying in a minute. You're breaking <laughs> my heart. Well, Damn, man. Yeah, but no, anyway, I the, think the, 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 but the point being that I, I kind of get what you mean. I kind of get what you mean by, you know, you are beholden to the big services if that's what you're using for streaming. Now, I suppose the argument would be, well, some of these are too big to fail. Netflix isn't ever going to fold. Well, is it? Maybe. Maybe. Well, it might. You know, anything can happen. The, pro know. the no, problem, no. though, with uh, the Netflix is not trying to sell you content that and then giving you this strange sort of right yeah, concept sell of you ownership any. over it you know they're yeah. just giving you a streaming platform they're just like remember at the end of the month you get none of this yeah that, that's the, the, this that's will no longer motto. be available but this is coming on board yeah. yeah they're completely transparent about it right from the start and they're not saying this is yours in perpetuity they're saying you can watch this as long as you're one paying us and two we have the licensing for it and three, you're not using a different, more than one IP address to access our services unless you pay extra money for it. <laughs> um, I mean, Prime Video, I suppose, is a bit more buy and sell because they have the rent and the Wait buy a minute. No, and all that. No, absolutely not. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I do agree with you because Amazon is one of the one of the biggest like perpetrators of this type of thing. And they didn't even go out of business. They're just like, guess what? We lost the licensing. Sorry, that movie that you bought, you didn't. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That was one of the things that I wanted to make sure that we hit on yeah. during l last week's uh, Mint Cash show. So, because episode yeah, four forty six, lose... folks, go check that out. As soon as they lose the license to be able to provide it to you, they don't anymore. Now, other companies right. have found ways around that, but I guess Amazon just doesn't want to leave those things on the servers. So. Yeah. So if buying is not owning, then ripping is not stealing. Right. Hey. Whatever. Hey. Oh, that's an that's interesting a way to pick it apart from the rear I'm, end. I'm just saying, man. Like, I, if 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 
they're going to try and, t you know, haul people to court for copying bits, then they need to be held accountable for them stealing from you. You bought this. They stole it. It's that simple. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And there's and usually the reason it goes away is because of bankruptcy, which which removes their uh, removes the concept where they have to compensate people somehow for it. You know, well, see, you yeah. just sell it to private equity and then they uh, they load it up with debt, drive it into the ground, file for bankruptcy, get none of the obligation and then just relaunch it. And that's well, yeah. And, and Something that I, I want to touch on real quick in regards to the subject that just happened to me the other day. Um, I was Joe's part of a private equity firm, so let's <laughs> listen closely here. I was having trouble um, accessing the internet from my home network, but my home networking still worked, right? But um, when I tried to load up my Plex, it says Plex TV cannot be reached even though I was using the local address. So I think this is going to be the impetus that sends me towards uh, Jellyfin. I've had a couple problems trying you, to use the local address with, with Jellyfin, too. You broke that it, was, Joe, that you can still access things what, locally. No, I should still be able to access things locally. No, 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 you and can I was, access I, things locally. I was able locally. to go to the page, but when I went to the page, you know, uh, 192.168, where my Plex is at, and then um, it, it would try to load, and then it says Plex.tv cannot be reached. So sounds like, yes. You do I have mean, a static there's... IP for that device, right? I have a local address for that. That's all I need. That right. should be all I need. Right. It is all you need because I'm on my own Plex right now directly. And I, that's how I access mine all the time using... The, the 192, my local address. And I was able to access that before I had internet problems, but then after I had internet problems, you know, getting to the outside world, I could no longer access my local Plex because it says Plex.tv cannot be reached. Here's my question for you, for you networking uh, pros. Let's say I've got a Jellyfin or a Plex and, and I can resolve it by going to the like with jellyfin and running in a container you have to uh, specify the port number which i don't even remember what it is uh but we'll say that it's like 192 it's whatever you decide one, it is 167 and then the port number i just don't remember um and then that resolves right here on my home network but is is <coughs> tcp ip smart enough to where when I put in the answer is no jellyfin.hauserfamily.net does does it get uh, routed straight to the local address or does it go out to the internet and hold on TCP doesn't doesn't do that bit uh, DNS will do that bit or and DNS yes okay. it will if you have local records in DNS to make that resolution so I gotta right? put something into the host file of the device that well not necessarily you can just do it on your on your router's dns server like so ah. your router has a dns forwarder that forwards out all of the requests for facebook.com because i know that's where you like to go um, you know out, it <laughs> out to your isp's <laughs> dns or if you configure it that way out to cloudflare or google or something like that right but you can also add local dns records that says you know bills plex dot local it'll resolve that into yeah you know, your local IP address. That that can definitely happen, yes. But that gotcha. doesn't require uh, TCP. Matter of fact, DNS is a UDP-type protocol. But anyway, no, no, I'm getting into the weeds. So, yes, you can do that for sure. Because I'm just thinking that's a much more efficient way of handling when you're, when you're on a home device and you're trying to connect to a home server. Now, mm -hmm. Majin, that's how I do it. In, in your case, you would probably be better off putting the files on because that's got like samba and that running yeah by default anyway yeah. well you can put your media server on something else like a pi and then reference the samba server or something like that but he's got a synology so i think he'd probably be better to so, run so, so i've just shared the link in the discord so i i i, I tried to install jellyfin 
mm. uh, on the NAS. I, I use this guide because I don't understand containers and Docker or anything like that. So I just thought, well, if I just follow this dude, because, hey, what could possibly go wrong? Um, and, Following and some, a random how-to on the internet. What yeah, could exactly. possibly go wrong? And for some reason, I, I don't know, it, it, I can't get it to work. And as, I think it's because of my lack of networking knowledge. I'm getting my ports mixed up or maybe the whole Synology quick connect thing is getting in the way, which it probably shouldn't have signed up for. But hey, ho, I did. Um, I, I did. Did the Synology okay? If you're setting this up on a regular machine, you got to make sure that you've got a static IP on that machine, just like you would on any web server. That way, when you're connecting from the client, the client ha knows exactly every single time what device to connect to. Mm -hmm. Is Synology just running a static sort of IP? situation somehow or how does how does synology handle that good question because i don't know if he did if you didn't set it up majid it's grabbing a an ip address automatically through dhcp but this is not a bad thing because most networks are calm enough that a device that gets an automatic address just continues to request the same address over and over and mm -hmm. over into forever so it's not likely that your thing has just moved I'm trying. I'm trying to think why he would. I mean, it's well. It's no doubt a Docker thing. Um, this guy hasn't even showed us any screenshots or error messages or anything like that. He yeah. just can't get there. <laughs> can't get yeah. there from here. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you're, if, especially if you just copy and paste a Docker uh, compose or something like that, then you, you might. That might be where you would start to look for problems because. With most Docker composes, there are things you've got to go in and change from the copy and paste because that mm -hmm. you're looking at a copy of this guy's Docker compose, and the Jellyfin Docker compose is it's not super. I mean, it's not as big as like the Nextcloud all-in-one image or anything like that. But there there is things you have to set that are specific to your setup, like. Mm -hmm. you know, exactly the the file path to get to your media that's going to be uh specific to your setup mm -hmm. um but yeah that would be that would be one place i would start mm -hmm. i mean i mean I, I know that synology have quite a lot of first party solution things as well so i mean i wonder whether maybe i'm better off just using whatever thing they've got um, but then it's, I worry about it. it's not going to be as cross, oh, sorry, it's not going to be as cross platform as mm. something established, whether it's Plex or um, Jellyfin. So know. there's not like, uh, so doesn't Synology have like the store that you can Yeah, it does. And, and it does have app? media server on there. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, like it doesn't have a Plex app. On there, I was I could have sworn so, they had. Yeah, so they did have a Plex app on here. Um, what was the problem with it? Oh yeah, I had to update my NAS to uh, because it was wasn't compatible with the version with the version of Synology OS or whatever that's running on mm -hmm. it. Um, and you and just didn't I did, want the update? <laughs> no, no, no. And then I did get it, and I did install oh, okay. it, and then. Oh, something else happened and I can't remember what exactly it, it, it was having to, I don't know it anyway it did uh, I, I was at that point that I think I saw the conversation that you guys were having about jellyfin and then I thought well actually let me try that instead mm. um so it, it's 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 I need to spend more time doing the stuff I haven't done so that. I'm I'm hearing I complicated it just because like it wasn't <laughs> complicated enough already by yeah itself. right right exactly yeah I'm going into this blind but let's take a left turn at Albuquerque. I'll tell you something else <laughs> cool about that. I, I just recently, see, I used to use Kodi on like Libra Elec and just connect mm -hmm. to a sample yeah, server yeah. and run that. Well, I I had heard that there was a really good Jellyfin um, plug-in for Kodi. I didn't mm -hmm. know how good it was until I just spun up Kodi right here on the desktop. And then I and that's why that Bill looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I look homeless. Um and then I installed that plugin, and then there's a plugin you install on the Jellyfin server to 
it just kind of works in coordination and keeps everything up to date and that and it's seamless it's it's added the chili fin server basically to the interface for cody so if you were if you had a situation where you didn't have because the the problem with jellyfin it's better than it used to be but the problem with jellyfin is the clients because you can get a plex client in yeah yeah and including smart tvs so and it's easy yeah yeah and the problem with you can get jellyfin anywhere android based or you know hmm. and by extension your your fire sticks and your rokus and stuff like mm. that but if you got like a sam all you've got is a samsung tv so sharing mm. your jellyfin server is complicated yeah well i mean it's that complicated so for mm. anybody that didn't want to use one of those things, they just wanted to use their smart TV for their Netflix or that, you could use... Well, you see, Grandma, you can get access to my Jellyfin server. You just have to buy an Android tablet. I know you're used to iPad No, all, you've got to but... buy a Raspberry Pi and put Libre Electric, <laughs> oh, Grandma. Even and better, you've Grandma. Got to, you've got to <laughs> put the plug in. you got to get the Jellyfin plug in. And then we'll just add an application to your iPad that is a controller for uh, your Raspberry Pi to control your... The day my grandmother buys an iPad, she's dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, I will help you. She's already dead, so that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go leave it. Yeah, oh, dear, dear. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to say that a psychologist could have unpacked a lot in the last two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and not just on Bill, on Leo as well. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. yeah, uh, it gets a little complicated with Jellyfin. But, I mean, Jellyfin is for that person. It really is for that person. The same person that would run Tenacity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, we're we're willing to put up with a few less Joe. Than, <laughs> less than convenient things just to have something that is that we consider. Oh no, to be but I do sovereign. I do know what Bill is talking about because I have conversations with my wife on occasion on uh, explaining. You talk to your to wife? Oh yeah, my I know, god! It's crazy. You're supposed to talk to those things uh, on installing heck? certain things on her phone so that she doesn't have to deal with ads in certain circumstances. Yeah, a and she's like, "Well, that's just way too complicated." I, I don't yeah, know, I'll just put up with ads. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, okay. Yep. okay. Speaking of phones, guess which idiot decided to buy a new phone? Me. You got one of them folding you phones. You decided to buy something? I <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Oh, let's is add the, you to the list hey, of people. Uh, that... it, it, Just a quick which, question: Which company? Which company? Is it the Galaxy or is it? Yeah, the... so I got so I got the Galaxy uh, Z Fold Five. Well, now I can now I can sell well, you. I've anything. never heard of that phone. So you yeah. spent the eight hundred pounds on the insurance because that screen is going to cost you two thousand dollars to replace, right? Okay, so <laughs> here it comes. Okay. You're not going to make this sound good. Oh. So. I know I'm not. I'm not. But anyway. <laughs> Let's keep going. So when I was in India, <clears throat> my brother-in-law had a Z Fold 5. And it was, you know, it seemed pretty cool. Now, he did complain that the cover screen is too narrow and it's a bit difficult to type on, blah, blah, blah. And I was kind of like, yeah, but it still looks cool. Anyway, <laughs> I, um, I then saw some f uh, coverage of the new Pixel 9 Pro Fold which is which came out with the new Pixel 9s. I then also saw some coverage about the Honor Magic V3 and the Huawei triple folding, this, that, and the other. And I thought, I got to get myself some of that fold in action, right? Um, Don't ever do that again. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, no. And so the wallpaper that he's got on this phone is a guy in a turban with an AK-47. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that does it. I'm going to... Okay, yeah. Uh, anyway, I then... Um, so, um, but you know, they are ridiculously expensive. Yeah. No, that's ever stopped me in the past. I'm not, I'm not going to lie, but, um, I thought, so I thought to myself, well, you know what, there must be a good deal to be had somewhere. And so I was looking at a OnePlus open cause I remember we talked about this Joe and I, I couldn't get, they, they're still very expensive is the short answer. Still, now, yes. yeah. On the other hand, because there's now a Z stroke Z fold six, the five has come down in price because it's technically a year old and it's last year's generation. How blah. much? Well, okay. So I managed to get hold of this one 
um, f- which is the base model, 256 storage one, for about, okay, 730 quid is what? 800 something bucks, right? Now, considering that brand new, you know, it's 1600, I thought, eh, not bad. So you know? it's, it's $1,600 off the shelf. Yeah. And Apple phones are expensive. Hey, look, I, I'm, look, I didn't say anything about that. No, no, um, no. Apple I, phones it's just are something expensive. I hear. They're, they're under, t- they're, they're, okay, these folds are still under 2K. So, yes, Apple phones are expensive. What? You can get most Apple phones for under 1600 Well, you can get yeah. most Android phones for under like 800 but Right, but the Apple okay. phones actually work. Well, the Android anyway, <laughs> b- 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 before we go down Ooh. this uh, V, uh, you know, let me finish my anecdote at least, right? So anyway, I bought it and it came pretty quickly. And I actually managed to sell my S24 Ultra for a good price as well. About about 800 bucks, which I thought not bad. So it's basically I've, all I've done is just I've done a swap, basically, in a sense. Um, and I get the thing about the cover screen being too narrow. It, it does get annoying. It's difficult to type on. Uh, it's okay if you're doing oh, no. swiping, if you're doing um, <laughs> that kind of thing. But yeah, but I must say, so initially the first couple of days were oddly disorientating. And I was thinking to myself, why am I feeling a bit weird? And then I thought to myself, well, I've been using a phone in a particular form factor for almost 15 years. This is the first time using it in a different form factor, right? Um, and once you start getting into the foldable way of doing things, you know, if you're going to read something on a website, you open it up. But if you're just going to quickly answer a message, you do it on the cover screen, things like that. I then actually found that I quite like this. Um, uh, oh, it's basically a tablet in your pocket, you know, and, you know, whenever you want to do anything, even slightly, I mean, I don't do my, I do some productivity stuff, but even if you want to do anything, it's only slightly more complicated than tapping out a WhatsApp or an SMS, Mm -hmm. then it's actually quite useful having that bigger screen. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so however, having said that, um, I can't imagine I'm going to keep this for too long because it is, yeah, I mean, as I said, it is different. It is different. It's big and bulky and cumbersome. And yeah, which, you know, for a guy, which for a guy who normally spends most of his time in theater scrubs is an issue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you know things falling out, every... but the real oh, question yes. is though. Yes. Well, the real question is yes, actually, yes, yes. <laughs> how does Jellyfin look on it when you watch a video? Okay, yeah. So I've been trying to get Jellyfin to work on this as well. Um, I haven't got to it yet. I've, I've all I've done is that it, uh, I downloaded it. This I may be the turning up. point. This is the thing that's going to convince well, you to keep it. Yeah, it's I'll tell you. you that, I'll. I was going to just say uh, the one, the other thing that disappointed me, and it, it, uh, this is, you know, you got to understand that this phone, brand new, you know, would have been sixteen hundred, right? The camera is not that of a phone that costs that much. It's not that of a phone that costs. Well, a grand. you didn't pay sixteen hundred for a camera. Well, the thing is, you paid sixteen hundred to pay another sixteen hundred to replace that foldable screen. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what I was going to get to about this device. Okay. Go on. You're paying that, that top end Samsung Galaxy phone price for one of these Galaxy Folds. Yeah. But what you're not getting is the internals that are the premium that yeah. you get with the, with the Ultra line. Yeah. So you're no, paying that, that, that's Ultra definitely. prices. Yeah. And all you're getting is a larger screen. Yeah, I mean, and that it's is not true. dynamically. From what I've noticed, with a with a tablet, you get a dynamically sort of morphed uh, version of the of what you would get on a phone. But in um, this case, it, it, it's your, it, it's better than it used to be. I yeah, must say, most apps just aren't optimized for that screen yeah. ratio. And, true, um, but as I said, the, no, the the camera, the thing that disappointed me because I don't know if you guys remember, but. Um, I used to have a OnePlus uh, last year and it um, it annoyed me, even though I loved the phone in every other single way, because I went on a trip to Morocco and it was quite a memorable trip and the photos I got were not that good. And I was it really annoyed me because I thought to myself, you know, this has been something, a real memorable trip, trip of a lifetime type thing and the photos I've got are distinctly average. And that's why I just thought I'd no, no, get no, the you, S24. You mispronounced distinctly Android. <laughs> 
So that's why I got the S24 Ultra. And I must say the photos on that were brilliant. That's what I had when I was in India. And the photos were oh, wait, wait. really what, good. What, what was the operating system on that S24 Ultra? Oh, yes. Android. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Dun. It's amazing. Uh, look, that look man. I mean, I, 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 wait, I so didn't you know, know what you're going to get. Yeah. The expectation we have of pictures nowadays, because I'd look at some pictures of uh, vacations I took in the 90s with a disposable camera that I got from the gas station mm. uh, that I would take and spend even more money to get the, the prints made. And It wasn't that expensive to get prints. Comparatively. Yeah, but I had to go to the store. Door. You were but already it, there. Uh, you no, were there for some reason but, already. But I think, it, yeah, but I think a lot of it is to do hour. with this. Yeah. yeah. I, I think a lot of it is to do with the money that we're spending on these, though. You know. So you know, if you know, um, I if I'd had a budget Android that was two hundred quid or something, and I, the photos that came out were distinctly average, I'd be like, well, you get what you pay for. But it's not a kind of linear thing, is it? It's not like you know uh, the the photos from a 400 pound phone are double the quality of a 200. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, it plateaus off. Uh, and so then, and then that means that if you are spending more money, you're like, well, actually, you know, I want to get my money's worth. I want, I, you're less tolerant of things being a bit crap. I'll stay quiet for a little bit while you hash this out. No, I mean, um, I'm not even going to get into the, uh, the the Apple side of this because I've just been watching videos talking it's about how how bad uh, Apple phones have got, um, how bad the cameras in Apple phones have got over the last couple of years. But, you know, hey, I'll it's leave that. It's starting to matter to Leo how much we care about Apple. <laughs> it's, yeah, that's great. But, you know, um, yeah, I gotta, so, I'm so afraid folding somebody... phones. That's where I'm on. That's what I'm on folding Look, phones. And for the longest time, you know, uh, well, not even the longest time for like a year or two there. The best thing that I could say about Apple was they were the only ones making a modern um, smartphone that could be classified potentially as mini. Yeah. Oh, that was so sad, dude. I had the they 12 mini. The line, yeah. Yeah. I had the 12 mini and I was going to get uh, 14 or 15 mini. But they got rid of the mini, so I had to get the regular. Uh, I think like the smallest size phone you can get now is like six point two. Yeah, this yeah, six point uh, one or six point two. Yeah, the iPhone fifteen Pro. Uh, Pro no, is I'm talking six point one. Any which, modern phone. I don't think they make any modern phone that's really. under like. 6. They ain't even got room for a headphone 6. jack. They need they need that thing to be as big as. No, well, you just need the courage. You just need the courage. That's right. That was yeah, that was bravery right there. Yes, sir. <laughs> Even though, you know, HTC did it years before. Yeah, and then Samsung quickly did it after, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't even know, I guess, I don't even know why I say Android anymore, because that Dumb doesn't matter life. at all. It's just Samsung now. Samsung puts a lot on top of Android. No yeah, but about it. but well, Android is Samsung. Samsung is Android. Yes, uh, in there the are states, other options. In the States, in the States. Not in the rest of the world. No, Not no, in India. Trust me, end. it wasn't in India. Well, right, right. But right. I think that's a different for, segment of the market that they're targeting. And then it's it, it's definitely yeah, it's definitely Samsung here. Now I know Huawei comes out with some good stuff, um, but it, it just can't really compete with Samsung here. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, no, definitely in the states, that's fine. I mean, yeah, and even parts of Western Europe, I'd say as well. But it, in the other parts of the world, you know. It's, you know, um, in India, for example, Android is king. I saw three iPhones sure. in the entire time I was there. There were so many different phones, were they with so many different species. Hmm? Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure there are. I'm sure there no, are. No, was, was, was the was the Apple phone the three that you saw? Were they status um, symbols? Uh, one of them they... probably was. Okay. I'm not sure about the other two. One of them I, I think was. I think that's less and less of the case here anymore. I mean, I think it's already permeated the the. American well, yeah. I mean, in the in, in the in the but, West, everybody's locked in now, isn't it? Even if well, people wanted to change away from an iPhone, it's now difficult for them because of Apple's lock-in stuff. Okay, I've, I've, like, I've, Android, I've, like Google doesn't have lock-in. Okay. Apple. Oh, it, but yeah, but nothing like, now. but not compared oh, to Apple. Oh, please get out of here with that, man. How long would it take you to, to decouple? If you bought into the ecosystem, if you use Google stuff, 
how long would it realistically take you to export all your pass keys, export all your passwords, but export all the all Google your stuff emails, works on iPhones your, anyway. Right, but that's, that's but, the right. difference. I can go buy a $60 Android phone and access my Google account. You're you're not going to do that with you're you're bought into a, a superior, more expensive ecosystem. You said superior, not me. Well, what I mean is superior. There, there's <laughs> it's no got such a thing as a superiority complex. That's what he said. No, it does have that too. You know, there's no, there's no. It, it, you got to buy into this. It's a pay-to-play system where you've kind of. Well, I mean, you're you're locking out the poor people, really, uh, or the people that just are not willing to spend premium prices for premium devices. Hey, well, average <laughs> devices. Well, but, uh, I mean, say. I'm I'm not. I'm not saying there are people that can't afford $450, but you can get a modern, new, has four more years of support iPhone for like 450 bucks. Okay, but you can, can you? get a Samsung SC? A15. Mm-hmm. The SE2s, you can get them secondhand for about 400 bucks. Okay, but you can get a brand new Samsung A15 that's going to have most of the exact same stuff that the more expensive right, but th- Samsung this is, has. Sure, but what I'm, what, what, what I'm saying is that like, if you want an iPhone, you can get an iPhone. Uh, I mean, un- unless you can't but, but hit that $400 mark. But why would you mark. want an iPhone? I mean, well, that's individual preference now, isn't it? I don't know. I want an iPhone because I don't want to have to think about my phone ever. Uh, you know, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so foldables is where I'm at at the minute. And um, it, it's definitely a talking point. People, there is definitely still a... Um, Ooh, what's that? Oh, let's check that out. You know, which is what she said as well. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I'd get in there before you did, Uh, which is also what she said. (laughs) (laughs) If she said that, I'd have my concerns. (laughs) Yes. (coughs) Very true. Very true. Anywho, so yeah, that's what uh, that's what I'm on at the minute. Anyway. I'll tell you one thing, though, which I want to figure out is... Hey, Maji. Yeah, go on, sorry. Hold on. Hey, Bill. Mm. Why'd you mute me? I'm trying to figure out where where this weird sound I'm getting is coming from. Is is it my air conditioner? No, it sounds like somebody banging their fingers on a table or something. Oh, I don't know. No, it ain't you. It's not anybody. It's not even me. Huh? You're hallucinating again? Maybe. Are I you an AI? So. Because Has, AI hallucinates. Did he ever Hopefully stop? it's just something I'm hearing and it's not going to be in the recording. Yeah, no, no. AI doesn't hallucinate. It just makes stuff up. It's and, delusional. And see, that's, that's, that's even going too far. It doesn't make anything up. It just grabbed random bits of data that was baked into its model and presented it to you as fact. I can mm. remember the first time I heard somebody use that word describing uh, AI as you... As you as it were, uh, coming up with weird stuff. And I remember thinking, yeah, that sounds great. People are going to latch onto that. And sure enough, yeah. they did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, it, it buys into the whole, like, you know, a- AI, the word, the words AI already give it way too much credit because it has yeah. intelligence in there, right? Yeah. Um, it's definitely artificial, but it's certainly not intelligent. Yeah. And then using the word hallucination gives it, um, like, psychology, Right, like well, that's the counterculture to the whole AI right, sort but that's, of marketing but, speak. But the unfortunate thing about that is that it buys into the fact that there is some kind of intelligence behind it, but there's none. So you know, saying it hallucinates is already going too far. Yeah, in I'm, giving I'm this getting, stuff I'm getting credit. really tired of the AI stuff. It's really get annoying. There's, me now. there's gonna be some actual goodness that comes out of it, man. Like a lot of this, but you gotta uh, wade through all the shit to find right. that goodness. Like, yeah. think of, think of like the blue squiggles under your word words in a word document, right? Hmm. Like AI hmm. is gonna make that slightly better because it's got a huge corpus of data that tells it what grammar looks like. So nineteen that, billions dollar worth of better, better exactly. Though. So I mean that's great. It's gonna it's gonna improve little things like that. But it's certainly not the big. Uh, it's not. Oh, it's the next electricity. It's going to change the what? No, it's not. Mm. Not even close. Mm. But yeah, no, it might let Siri understand when I don't even know what I'm talking about. So does, does Siri understand anything though? 
Yes, it's not as bad as people like to say, but it's not great. So I You know mean, what's good? Bixby. No. Pause for comedic break. Yeah. Ah. Uh, it's still, Hey Alexa, I, play Rick <laughs> Astley. No, I switched out. I switched well, out. Rick Astley's Google. never gonna give you up and never yeah. gonna let you down. That's which right. is not the <laughs> which is definitely not something that can be said for Bixby. That's correct. All I needed to do is dial phone numbers when I'm driving down the road. Right, and, exactly. But Siri here's can, the problem I was running into. Listening to podcasts about technology while I'm driving. And it's playing through my Android phone. And when you listen to something like Coder Radio, every other word is Google. And then yeah. that just lights up my phone because I never took the time to do the, the voice uh, training thing or whatever. Yeah, and I, so I still I, haven't done that for Siri. Uh, yeah. So my, my little speakers sometimes are like, who's speaking? And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> so yeah i had to find something else i was like i've tried bixby and sure enough I, it actually works a little better for recognizing well it's not google let's put it yeah. that way. no i mean the one thing i do remember when i used to use bixby bixby which wasn't that often but see i just can't even uh, say it that's for, a big problem for, already <laughs> yeah for, for local things it did seem because that's what they were pitching it as you know, they wanted people to use their phone by saying, you know, now go to my gallery. And, you know, it would then open up your gallery app. And, you know, the idea was that it would do local things. That's just things. lazy. It's a tap. Well, no, yeah, but <laughs> mm -hmm. fair enough, you know. But, you know, that was that was the way that Samsung was selling it, I remember, around the time. Because what was it, the S8, when they had the Bixby button and all that sort of crap. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm not surprised then that, for the thing, the use cases that Bill is saying that it probably works a bit better because something like Google Assistant or Gemini is sending all of that stuff to the cloud and then figuring out what you've said. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, I'm an on-device kind of guy. Yeah. And I've noticed uh, the number of TikTok videos that are directly related to the thing that I was just talking to somebody on the phone 10 minutes prior has gone down sh sharply too since I've seen Yeah, notice the big Gemini. companies aren't aren't saying like, no, we're not doing that anymore because yeah. we know. Yeah. You absolutely are. Uh, what I don't know is, is it happening because TikTok is running in the background or is it literally, it would have to, see, they would have to be selling that data in real time because I, I had this, and nobody can convince me this is not happening because I had a friend, we were talking on the phone. I'll try. And, and we were having a conversation about how many minutes were in a billion years. And then an hour later, I get a video where some woman says, did you know there's this many minutes in a billion years? And okay, I thought, yeah, a bit freaky, okay. <laughs> yeah, that is as specific as it gets. And you cannot tell me that, well, no, it's just the algorithm is just so good that it knows you better than you know yourself. Well, it doesn't know me that good because I didn't know any of that or had nor did i have the interest in that conversation 10 yeah. minutes before the, i did the question is not is it happening but how who sold who what when to get that video in front of your face that's that's the question now what i'm wondering is because i do get android and especially on the samsung is one good thing about it is that it is monitoring power usage and sometimes it will complain about TikTok, especially when it's running in the background. Well, now, what is TikTok doing when it's running in the back? Because most people, they don't close out their apps. They just they just move on to the next no, thing. No, 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 no. Google's Android is really great about sleeping apps in the background. It's one mm. of the best operating systems in the world. It should be. But, <laughs> I mean, who's... You know, who's looking after how people are writing the code that goes on these things anymore? You know, Google when oh. their artificial intelligence, Gemini, is oh, looking yeah. out for you. Yeah. Well, yeah, that go. is <laughs> looking at everything I do. Yeah. But how else could it protect you, Bill? It needs to know everything. And for about God's sake, you. would somebody think of the children? <laughs> yeah, we have the uh, uh, Kids Online Safety Act going second time. Oh my still terrible going through Congress right now, buddy. We're thinking for the kids. Written by people that it seems like have never been online. 
and Listen. haven't had any kids in 60 years. <sighs> uh, here's a question. You guys have got an election coming up. Surely at this oh, point of this, time. This, this pick. Do we did you, really? Did you, did, I could you hear no. my eyes roll when you said that? <laughs> I, I could hear your ocular veins just snap. Right? No. <laughs> so, so, my, so my point being that, no, the question I was asking was that, do you, not, do you guys not have this thing, because we have this in the UK, that when the election starts proper, you know, you know, um, Parliament is three years ended, ago. Ed, ended basically. You know, and there's no, there's no legislation happening because there is technically no government because there's an election happening. Now I know it's different because you've got a presidential election. It's different to Congress elections and stuff like that. But do you not have that kind of, you know, period where that nothing lame goes duck through? Period. Yeah. Yeah, you call after them. somebody. Trump, is... Trump tried to create that period by causing a governmental shutdown. He wants to hold the entire nation hostage. But no, we don't have anything like that that's legitimate. Yeah, there, there's a bit of a lame duck period where it's, I mean, but that's after almost the impossible. Election. In yeah. between the election and the next person taking office, you have the lame and duck. And it really depends on the balance in um, Congress on whether or not that's an issue. So the mm -hmm. short answer is no, man. Politic, okay. po uh, political discussion is 24-7, wall-to-wall, balls-to-the-wall, all the time, every time, any time. Now, technically, in the past, um, you know, uh, candidates haven't really said anything until the year of the election in, like, February. Um, nope. The next election cycle starts right after the end of this election cycle. Yeah, but now... The president, with in regards to the presidential election, it seems like it starts almost directly after. Although Trump did give us a year break, but then he found out that he was going, he might potentially be going to jail, so he had to say that he <laughs> was a fire political that candidate. Up, baby. So that way he could say it was all politically motivated because they didn't want him to be president again. Mm, so okay. anytime you get somebody elected now, sorry, Dave, the half for for the other half, and it is half of the country it becomes disaster that we have to figure out a way to fix. And then the whole narrative is spun up behind that, the how terrible mm -hmm. this person we have is in office and who is going to be our hero to come and save yeah, us in four years. It, it does seem like there's, there's an eight year cycle though. So it'll be eight years, Democrat, eight years, Republican. Usually there are exceptions, but they act like it's not every single time. Oh, terribly bad. Another question, actually, I know that you guys have the two term limit on presidents, but is that two terms consecutively or is that two terms in total? total. Totally. So, so if Trump, for example, was Who to was it, Grover get Cleveland? in, he did that. Yeah. So if well, if Trump was to get in, that did more. Yeah. But if Trump FDR. was to get in, then he that would be his last <laughs> time as president. It'd be his last term. Well, then Unless it's Barron's turn. he changes turn. the law. Yeah. Well, no. Things. It's it'll be no. It's been sons. changed in the past because previously you could do more than two terms. The restriction if got there's added. A war. It can be removed. Hmm. Yeah, he, yeah, there's a and war. not to mention he might pull a Netanyahu. Yeah, yeah. What well, uh, you know, b bomb thousands of innocent civilians to death and make them in order pages to stay explode. in power. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Flip it out, man. This is that Trump. Guy, he doesn't care. Yeah, that is about true. anybody that isn't named Donald Trump Senior. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, man. Seriously, I can imagine it being frightening times. Actually, we'll get by. I think, well, I'm, I'm not going to make any predictions on this show, but it might get better one way or the other. It looks like it's going to be Harris. Yeah. But hey, but, you know, you don't know until the fat lady sings and Bill ain't singing yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fucked up. So, on that bomb, on that bomb show... <laughs> Well, I guess we ought to get out of here then. That was a pretty good one. Pretty good crack. Yeah. Um, and it was a good show. Um, <laughs> oh, you need to send me the link where I need to drop this. Yeah, we'll get on that. We'll be back in two weeks. Until then, I've been Bill. I've been Majid. I still am Joe. Hey, I'm still Leo. <laughs> See you later, folks. <laughs>